From the Sunshine State, this is Tampa Bay's Tan Talk. Good morning. Welcome to Dispatch Radio, brought to you by GlobalDispatch.com. I am Brandon Jones, where we try to bring you and all the news, catch you up on all the happenings that have been going on all week, and uh, give you a little education and information that might hopefully help you out in your daily lives and uh, make the time go by just a little bit faster. With me, as always, the infectious disease guru himself, Robert Harriman. How are you this morning, Bob? Hey, brother. How are you doing? Uh, got a huge day today for the GlobalDispatch.com and Dispatch Radio. We are definitely going to be busy today, and if you uh, are not planning to head out to the Florida Unity in Action uh, conference, convention, event up in uh, Shady Hills area. This uh, beautiful floor today, then you're going to be missing out. We'll be there uh, from 9 to 5. You can go to the uh, Florida Unity in Action. You can Google that. You can get to their website, get more information, all the different groups that are going to be there and organizing and talking about some of the things that are happening in Florida. Tomorrow is also a big day. Mr. Harriman himself turns the big five zero tomorrow, half a uh, century under his belt. Uh very excited about your birthday. Very yeah. excited. Going to go out and enjoy time with the family. Last celebration. Have some good times. Um, half a century old, but still pretty spry. You are definitely spry. If we uh, <laughs> were around the clock, even five years, you probably would never know that you were in the middle of a, a giant Google News website and a, a radio show at the wee hours of Saturday mornings with some schmuck like me. Look at look at how things have changed. Who could have predicted it? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, For those of you that don't know, we also have a great opportunity that the Global Dispatch and Dispatch Radio will be sponsoring an advanced screening of a new movie coming out called The Fifth Estate. It is uh, Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, starring Benedict Cumberbatch. He's the villain in the Star Trek Into Darkness movie. And of course, he is the star on the famous BBC One Sherlock series. So we're going to... uh, have an opportunity for you to call in right from the get-go of this show. If you want to call in and win tickets to that, there's no trivia, there's no special gimmicks, just the first two callers that get through to Bill and Jake in the uh, engineering room will get a advanced screening. It is October the 15th, AMC West Shore. You get a ticket for you and a, and a friend, a partner, a cohort to enjoy Ben Batch in the Julian Assange film. So call now, 727 441 3000 at 727-441-3000, or you can call 1-866-826-1340. Get your name and number on the list. Get a pair of tickets for you to join us for the Fifth Estate. All right, Bob, let's get right to the news of the week. Uh, has been government shut down all the time. I mean, you, 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 we're so shut down, I'm surprised anything is happening. They're, that's all we talk about is shut down. I'm surprised that they're even having conferences and uh uh, communications and meetings and Congress is even in session. They're, they're, it's shut down all oh. the time. Well, I can hardly believe I can walk out the door right now without planes falling out of the sky or me getting poisoned by asparagus or anything. Cats and dogs living together, fire and brimstone falling yeah, from the sky. Yeah, Bill I mean, Murray style. We've been through this before, and it, it's so it always turns out to be the same. I was once a federal employee, and uh, uh, believe me, these people that are furloughed, uh, they're going to be getting back pay. It's happened before. Yeah. So those of you that don't know, and and we really didn't post a story on this on Global Dispatch. I'm not sure what there is to say about it, but we did post on our Facebook page. If you go to Facebook forward uh, forward slash um, Dispatch Radio and Global Dispatch, you'll find our Facebook page there. But we put the slideshow up of uh, the 17 previous shutdowns. So this has happened several times in the past, funding issues, ideology issues. So... Of the shutdown stories that have been out there, Bob, what are some of the ones that have kind of struck you the most? I mean, obviously the World War II vet thing has been a big issue with national parks, but what are some of the stuff you want to bring to the table? Yeah, the World War II uh, thing with the vets, I mean, why are they even putting up barricades around these open spaces? That's costing more money than it would be just to leave it be. Again, uh, no sense with the government on that case. Um, I personally, uh, things that I covered were... Uh, um, things about the CDC for low end people and how they wouldn't be able to put out the weekly uh, flu view surveillance and how 
you know, apparently, I guess this, they don't think the states can handle that. And uh, I didn't even know we had a weekly flu view. But oh, yes. I'm, I'm thrilled to know that that's yeah. being taken care of on a and, weekly basis. And how they wouldn't be able to monitor the major outbreaks of, of this year, like uh, the MERS outbreak and, and bird flu. And that's already being monitored by the countries that they're prominent in. By them and, uh, and, and the World Health Organization. So that's all being handled. Um, uh, even the uh, director of the CDC said, uh, warning, the microbes didn't shut down. So, uh, uh, scare tactics. Yeah. Is there any truth to any of this? Probably a little bit. Yeah. Cause if something major happens, uh, yeah, there could be a problem, but you know, immediately they're going to be bringing these people right back. Well, I want to go back to the world war two thing. Cause this one to me is very, very telling because it's just sidewalks. There's really nothing there to, uh, coordinate to organize we don't need people in the museum handling security and that you're just walking so why would they do this to me this is really really telling of the political motivations of the folks that are making these decisions the the folks that call the national park and says hey by the way we need to have these metal barriers put up that we spent more energy to keep people out of this area this walking area than we do normally just the normal Operations And to me, it's very telling of where we are with the government, what this administration will do, what the politics of Washington will do to control us and to send the message because they want you to be outraged by the things that affect you. So if you've heard the stories of the field trips or the uh, to national parks, the World War II vet organization that takes these men there so they can have a, a visit there and have these moments of reflection because they're all in their 90s. It's all about inflicting pain, right? Because what shutdown has affected you? I mean, we, we, we have the, the, the data, and I'll post a link to this here, where, you know, 90% of IRS is on furlough. Has that affected anyone? Has anyone, like, really been affected by the fact that, you know, 80-something percent of the Interior Department is on furlough? 90% of EPA is on furlough? In fact, let me bring up EPA for a minute. I did a story on Please. EPA. Mm-hmm. They, this guy's on... Uh, Interview after interview, and come to find out, give Breitbart.com credit, they outed the guy because he's technically a union rep. So he's been going on interview after interview talking about, I got to dip into savings, it's going to be real hard, whatever. He's a union rep. Talk about the hypocrisy and and just the, the scamming that's going on in media, folks. And this is where we are with our media. You've really got to be careful. You really have got to be challenging yourself and the outlet that they're being honest with covering this stuff. Because what aspect of the shutdown has affected your life? Now, I know there's people that are home, and yeah, maybe they don't have the money set aside in their savings account, but those checks will come. Bob pointed that out every single time. There's already been a bill. I think the House already put forward a bill so that these people, the people on furlough will get paid. Yeah. So that's really not the issue, which is frustrating in and of itself because now we're seeing the new, the new spin late yesterday was how much the, shur- the shutdown is costing us. You know, Each day the shutdown goes by, it costs us millions upon millions of dollars, which makes absolutely no sense to the concept of a shutdown, right? If you shut down, you're not doing anything, so therefore it shouldn't cost you money. Yeah, and and to me, you know, I've been around the federal government for many, many years in the military and as a civilian, uh, but what private organization can say that they have non-essential people and they don't have to come to work? If you're not essential, why does that position even exist? I don't understand that. And just one more point I want to make is uh, on uh, USA.gov, their website, when they said what's affected by the government shutdown and what's not affected, one of the things, ironically, they put up there is the U.S. Postal Service will keep delivering mail. But I hear time and again that taxpayer money doesn't go towards the Postal Service. This is run by stamps. Why would they even put that up? I, I, I really, I was just shocked too why they play this game of, you know, the mail will still run, the military will get paid. We all know all of this. It's just silliness. It is just really, really just insanity. Now, a couple of stories. If you go to theglobaldispatch.com, you, where we have our news site, on the top of the site on the right, you'll see trending topics and obviously government shutdowns leading the way. You'll go to all the stories that have that tag in there and you'll see. There was uh, Rand Paul, Mitch McConnell talking about it on an open mic, so you can catch that. But really, one of the things that has been huge was John Boehner being outed of just being a political negotiator and all this, how he's had all these secret meetings that have been revealed in these emails over the cl- over the course of the last six months of wheeling and dealing behind the scenes where he'll tell you 
GOP members and voters, how he's there to help you battle Obamacare, help you battle immigration, all these different things. But secretly, he's having all these meetings and conversations with the White House and Harry Reid to cut all these deals. Now, we posted that. I posted on Facebook. He needs to resign. He needs to be removed. You GOP people need to call your rep and say, I want him out. I want someone else in charge. Because if this is who you're, you're, your party's completely lost if he's spending half his time negotiating with the other side. So that's enough on government shutdown from, from that angle. Bob, anything else you want to throw in there? Because it's government shutdown all the time. It's no, just I, insane. I mean, just concerning, uh, you know, um, Boehner, you know, never trusted the guy. And, and it, the proof is in the pudding. It keeps on happening. Right, right. Well, we're going to go to an interview.